I just put the uh, tag runtime meeting notes in the chat if you wouldn't mind adding yourself to the attendance. And um, like saying if you're what you're affiliated with, if anything. Hey, we. You're you are muted. Thank goodness I had a terrible joke. So it was just, yeah, Mr. Rust, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> was it about a uh, Rust programming language by chance? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that one a lot? Well, I mean, it's it's the best language, right? It's well named. Oh. It's got something to do with the, this guy named Steven as well, is what I understand. So, in terms of it being the best, so I don't know. Perfect. I figure, uh, I figure we're here to present the project. So, a little bit of flattery, you know, a little bit of uh, that doesn't hurt anything. So, nice. Not one of those things like rewrite it on Rust, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Like you. Yeah, like like on an like a, on an American coin or something, you know, like in Rust we trust or something something like that. I don't know. Uh, so this is the August fifteenth uh, tag runtime uh, meeting. <clears throat> um, yeah, thanks for adding yourself to the attendance uh, in the talk today. We have uh, Meshery and. Uh, CEL playground presentation. So about half and half, if you guys wouldn't mind planning for around 30-ish minutes, um, just to leave room uh, for both. Uh, I, I, should only, I should only need about 15 minutes or so. This is just an introductory one for okay. playground. So I'm happy cool. to save my time. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. So um, I guess Meshery can go till about 45 past if that works. Who sure, is, yeah. Uh, yeah, are are you uh, presenting, Chris, today? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be presenting. Yeah, let's uh, dive right in, is that good? Yeah, why don't we dive right in, go, the floor is yours. Perfect, all right, let me uh, get my share going here. No, no, I lost everything. Uh, we we do see the. Yeah, we can see your screen. It's not on the first slide, but uh, we do see it. Are you okay, Chris? Chris is frozen. I think. Yeah, we might have lost him. Is now an appropriate time for a joke? Is that, uh, or um, depending upon if he comes back in the next 60 seconds or so, um, Kevin might like to be shoved. Yeah, I could, I could do that. That's fine. I'm easy. And I I didn't see Mr. Rust and Ricardo. I didn't mean, I don't, I, it's your agenda. I didn't, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that'd be good. Yeah. That's totally that, fine. That we, could, we could flip it. Yeah. Wait for um, Chris to join, rejoin. <clears throat> yeah, Kevin, you want to you wanna do uh, do your 15? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. Go. 
did, did I, is it, do you say cell or do you say CEL? Uh, I, I, I say sell. Awesome. Uh, I guess different people have different ways of, of saying it. I'm not here to, uh, to tell you whether it's right or wrong. I'm just, uh, that, that's the way I, I, I say sell when I'm referring to it. Uh, okay. Did that share? No. No, maybe that share. There we go. Yep. That's your, it's a blank screen. Uh, it's a blank screen. Well, it's your background. Okay, that's there's something that you see something that says a get up and BBA mm -hmm. though. That's the important part. So can you see this? Yes. I changed. Okay. So I assume you're seeing a a, a, uh, a slide which says cell playground. It has my name on it and it has a picture of cell playground. Uh, so mm -hmm. assuming I haven't done anything wrong, I will uh, continue with that. Uh, so yeah, my name is uh, Kevin Connor. I work at GetUp. I'm here just to do an introductory uh, presentation on Cell Playground. Uh, this is something which has come up within uh, within the Sandbox application that we're going through at the moment. Uh, we have presented in the past to SIG Auth, also to SIG API Machinery. It was suggested that the Tag Runtime would also be interested in this as well as the, the WASM working group. So we're working through those as well. Um, so what is Cell Playground? Uh, Cell Playground is a, uh, an, we're, we're hosting it uh, for the community. It's a, a WASM powered environment, which allows you to basically play around with the common expression language that uh, Google developed. Uh, it's uh, written in WASM, so everything runs in the browser. There's no remote services or anything like that. Uh, and it allows you to, to just play around, just to learn how Cell works, just to learn how to, uh, to use Cell within different uh, use cases. So the idea originally came when Matthias, one of the guys who works at GetUp, was uh, working with some of our customers uh, in Kubernetes, uh, specifically around another open source project that we have called Marvin, which does cluster scanning and uses Cell as the language for defining the, the rules. And he was looking for a way which he could not only teach the people who were uh, using Marvin, but also get them to to understand how it could be extended and used within Kubernetes as well with this Kubernetes use cases. So he asked in various places, uh, nobody seemed to know whether there was anything around, nobody had seen anything like this around, but everybody seemed to agree that it was a good idea. So he went and he created the first implementation of that, which was I think roughly a year ago. So maybe June or July last year. So for those of you who don't know, I assume most of you already know what Cell is. Uh, it's a, an expression language which was developed by Google. It is uh, a simple language which can be embedded into various applications. Kubernetes obviously embeds it for various use cases. The evaluation is fast, it's safe. It does checks like making sure that you don't have loops which are unbounded, et cetera. And more importantly, uh, certainly in the Kubernetes case, you can extend it and you can add functionality that is relevant to your use cases. So within Cell Playground itself, we have we currently have three modes that we support. Uh, the, the first one is the, the original one, the uh, Cell Expressions, where you can define your Cell Expression, you can define your input data, and then you can evaluate it. So you can run it and see what happens with that. So you can play around with the Cell Expression and see what the the difference in results are. Uh, hopefully that's legible on the, the screen. Uh, I do have a demo coming up, which I'll, I'll go into it briefly. So hopefully that will be clearer on that. But th uh, this is just really showing where the expression is, where the input data is, where the output data is. The second mode we introduced, which was earlier this year, I think probably about uh, maybe March this year was support for the initial support for validating admission policy. We have most of it there. Um, this takes a slightly different approach because now we're actually dealing with the resources that you would use within Kubernetes. So it's not just straight cell or straight data. We're actually looking at validating admission policies and parsing those, deployments and parsing those, etc. So we're now talking about resources which we're familiar with from the Kubernetes area. And it will perform the evaluations and give you up, give you the details of the evaluations that uh, have occurred within the output box. 
The third one that we have support for is uh, the web hoops for match conditions. Uh, and it's very similar. Uh, so when we're still dealing with uh, proper Kubernetes resources. Uh, so it's still the, the resources that we would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis within, within Kubernetes. And again, it uh, gives you details of how the execution has happened and uh, you know what the cost is for, for evaluating the expressions, et cetera. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to, like to go and do a demo. So what's wrong with me? So hopefully now you can see the cell playground window. Uh, can somebody confirm that, please? Uh, it looks good, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, so we have a, a mode box here where you can choose your different modes, and this is the basic one. So you have your cell expression here. Uh, is that readable? First of all, do I need to uh, zoom in on this or increase the font size? It looks good to me. I don't know if anybody else can see it. All right, so let me just increase it a bit. So here we have uh, the expression on the left-hand side, which you're going to play around with. And here you have your input data. This is just a like a fairly standard one. You know, somebody has they have a bank account, it has a balance, trying, they want to withdraw a certain amount of money. Can they do it? Uh, so the expression here, if the balance is greater than the withdrawal amount, then it, it gets approved. Or if they have an overdraft and you have enough space, so your overdraft limit is greater than what you're going to need, then it will approve it. Uh, so you run it, and in this case, it tells you the cost here, which was 15, and that it evaluates to true, right? So if you well then to change that to 17, then obviously that's uh, greater than your overdraft limit, so it would be false. So that's kind of the basic cell stuff that allows you to play around with cell. The more interesting ones are validating admission policy. Uh, so for example, let me choose, a, let's choose the variables one. So here we have an example which show, shows a number of variables uh, which are going to be evaluated. Uh, the first one just works out what the environment that you're running in is. Uh, so if it has an environments label, it will use that. Otherwise, it will default to prod. Uh, second one looks for an exempt label. Uh, to, says if that's true or not. So are you uh, exempt uh, from the check? Uh, the third one just works out the containers which are within in the template. The fourth one works out which containers you want to check. So in this case, all it's doing is looking for example.com within the image name. And then the validation rule itself, which says uh, either you're exempt or the containers to check must all start with the environment name. So in this case, if I go to the, the data, where is the image? So in this case, it would start with prod. Uh, so we, we run this, and then we get details of each of the uh, variables that have been evaluated. Gives you details of the containers, the containers to check, uh, and then the validation. And with each of those, you get a cost associated with it uh, as well. So you have the cost of evaluating the, the variables and then the, the cost of the validation at the end. Right? So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, so if we were to, uh, say, change this uh, and add an environment label, go to labels, okay. okay, say this is now the demo environment, then obviously we would expect that to fail, uh, which, uh, oh, this is true, what did I do wrong? Where is environment? Still says prod. Where did I, I got that wrong somehow. Okay, no mind. let's go for the exempt one instead. I must have misspelled that or something. Okay, so if we choose exempt and say that this one is true, then when we see the expression here being evaluated, because that one returns true, it doesn't bother to go and evaluate the other ones. So we can see that the, the variables are actually evaluated uh, on demand, uh, only as needed, uh, which is the way that Kubernetes would do it as well. Uh, so that's validating admission policy. Again, we have uh, the uh, other resources up here that you would need uh, that are available when you evaluate the validating admission policy. Um, the third mode we have is for webhooks. This is for the match conditions, so matching 
on the expressions here. It has a similar uh, look and feel. You have the resources that would be a part of the context when you're doing the evaluation. Uh, so the request, the old object, the authorizer. Uh, you, you also have the outputs of the, the evaluations there. Okay. So that's really what Cell, play, cell Playground is. It's a, a space where you can play around with Cell. You can understand, you can learn about its different use cases. And we're focusing primarily on Kubernetes, but really we, we want to extend into other ones, uh, other areas as well. So if I go back and uh, talk briefly about where we're going with the roadmap, uh, I did mention earlier that we're trying to get into the sandbox. Uh, we see this uh, as a benefit to the project uh, because it gives us more exposure. It means that we have, uh, we're on the radar of more of the CNCF projects uh, that will hopefully bring in contributions from those projects where we can start to support their use cases as well and make that a first class citizen within the cell playground. Uh, we do have a number of areas that we still have to fit with the current use cases. So configuration claim mapping, uh, authorization configurations. Uh, so those are really backend API, uh, so backend API server functionality, uh, and also custom resource validations. So looking at the validations within a CRD uh, and supporting that within the, the UI as well. Uh, we do want to add more structured editors into Cell. Uh, at the moment, everything is uh, really kind of free text. So there's no enforcement of the, the structure within the editors. And we obviously want to add that and add contextual editing and the like. So that's another improvement we want to do. Uh, we want to expand this, expand this to other projects, especially uh, CNCF ones. Uh, we know Istio use it. We know Envoy use it. There are almost only others which use Cell within their uh, various use cases. So we would like to expand into those. Uh, and we do intend to have this operate in live clusters. Uh, but that will probably mean that the, the whole deployment model has to change in order to support communication with the API server. Uh, but that's kind of us where we're going at the moment. Uh, we uh, we are going to have Cell Playground at KubeCon. Uh, so Anish uh, Ramasekar and I have a talk uh, coming up uh, in Salt Lake City uh, that got accepted this week. So we're, we're pleased about that. So if you are there and you're interested in seeing more about this, then please come along. Uh, if you've heard of Cell Playground before, or if you're interested in using it, then we, we are asking people to add their uh, uh, their affiliation or their name into the adopters file. So uh, if I go to there, so we, we've started, the, the, they've started coming in now, people who are adopting it. Uh, we've, uh, we had a reach out about a week ago where we started asking people to add their names into the adopters list. So we're, we're trying to push that forward so people could see where it's currently being used and who's currently using it. And uh, if you want to contribute, then obviously we would be more than happy to have contributions. Uh, we are a small team at the moment, so it is uh, coming in fits and starts. Uh, we will do a big push on various features and then we have other projects which we go away and deal with and then we'll come back to this in a while. So it's not as, uh, constant as we would like it to be. So obviously the more help we can get on that, the better. Uh, but there's a Slack channel, obviously the GitHub repo and the uh, the SaaS uh, environment that we, we are deploying for uh, for the community is there as well. So, so that's it really. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, hopefully this has been interesting. I do have a much longer version of this talk, which goes into a lot more details on these things. Uh, if it's in, if it is interesting to the tag, then I can come back and do that at, at a later date. But uh, for now, this is really just a way to introduce uh, Cell Playground to the tag as part of the uh, the process we're going through at the moment. So thank you very much. Cool. Thank that, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we are up on up on time to pass over to Meshri. I'm just wondering if there's any quick questions for Kevin before we move on. I know that Lee, you had a couple in the chat. I don't know if you want to ask those now or we can take that offline. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, Kevin, uh, you could check out the chat as well if you want to reply to Lee in there. Yeah, I'm just about to look at that. Thank you very much. Kevin, one quick question. The, uh, how does uh, CAL or common expression language com uh, compare to Rego or is it kind of similar in a way, or is it, uh, or have you looked at that or not? 
I, I honestly don't know. It's not a language that I've looked at. Uh, the, the interest in Cell really is coming from uh, the Kubernetes world uh, because Cell is being adopted in a lot of places, especially where you would traditionally have uh, webhooks and the like. So you would be, uh, the API server would be calling to remote services in order to, to make a decision, right? So uh, validating webhooks, uh, mutating webhooks is something which is certainly in process. And the idea is that we're trying to kind of sp speed all the, or the idea of adopting it with a Kubernetes is they're trying to get rid of all those long running remote tasks that are likely to fail. Uh, so they're moving, to, they're trying to move as much of the, uh, um, as many of the use cases as possible to something which is embedded within the API server can run locally. Uh, so obviously no issues with services going down. Um, anybody who's used webhooks will know that if you, if you especially if you've got a, uh, like I know with Istio, for example, we used to have webhooks there uh, that would mutate the, the pod and add the sidecar there. Uh, if the webhook went down, then you had issues with that. Uh, so there are uh, those kind of com complications they're trying to get rid of within Kubernetes and uh, support as many of the use cases by running something like Cell in the API server, API server itself. Makes sense. So Makes it's, sense. that's 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 why we are interested in cell. That's why this is, that's why we created the cell playground is really just to um, to pair with the work that was going on within Kubernetes and what we're doing within our open source project. Yeah, makes sense. So I I recommend you take a look at Radio um, and mm -hmm. try to see how because some some of the things are similar. So it might be a, a good idea to to find common points and and different or a differentiation between the, the, the two different projects. Yeah, that would, that would be great. And we would certainly not be averse to supporting multiple expression languages. Uh, we focused on cell at the moment, like I say, because of the background that we have and where we're coming from. But uh, if if it's a use to other in, in other areas, then yeah, that would be great to. Uh, yeah, because Rego is using the gatekeeper in the Kubernetes emission controller. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, using OPA, Open Policy Agent. So, so anyway, so to take a look and see if, uh, how you can compare to those. Yeah, I would do. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, and just to uh, just to be clear, you the the example of the playground you showed is running on the GetUp's GetUp uh, hosted, but someone could run this themselves as well. Is is that true? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've given demos in the past where I've had it running locally. <laughs> uh, so cool. yeah, you can you can run it yourself. It's 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 a very simple deployment because it's a WASM based one. So you're essentially just hosting a static site and downloading it, everything into the browser and running it within the browser. So you can host it anywhere you feel like. Okay, cool. Thank you for that clarification. All right, thanks very much, Kevin. Um, over to thanks you, Chris. Time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Apologies, I just updated Zoom and it did not go well. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Lee's kind enough to share the slides. So, yeah. Uh, welcome. This is a, a presentation for Meshery's um, move into the incubation status at CNCF. Um, so, for this uh, presentation today, we're going to go through what Meshery is, who it's for, uh, the features, architecture, community contributors, containers, governance, adopters, and then looking future, uh, looking into the future roadmap, uh, where the project is headed. Um, so to start with, it, what is Meshery? And uh, really this first point, I think, sums it up really well, extensible self-service platform for collaborative uh, infrastructure management. Um, the, the collaborative aspect is really a, a powerful uh, aspect of the Meshery platform, and we can go into a little more details further along. Uh, but I think we all know that working um, working in infrastructure these days, working in um, containerized environments, working in Kubernetes, it can can get complex. And um, especially when you grow your teams out, um, that collaborative aspect can get really important. Especially as the stakes rise, and you know, as we call out here, you know, we don't want to have any finger pointing or anything like that. So the more uh, tools we have to help collaboration, we see the better. Um, so lastly, there we actually provides lifecycle management, configuration management. So um, a lot of these tools that really su support the collaboration um, and allow teams to, um, you know, understand what's going on in their clusters and 
what kind of effect the changes might have on performance and, and things like that. Uh, lastly, who's this for? Well, this whole stack of uh, engineers it's for engineering teams, it's for people that work in infrastructure. Uh, but these days, that's often all the engineers. So we have DevOps platforms, set reliability, you know, on and on. Uh, but really, anybody who's working on the platform and might uh, benefit from either hands-on uh, making changes in the infrastructure, uh, or even just building understanding within teams of what's going on in the infrastructure, because that often is uh, important even for people who are not maybe actively managing uh, managing things. All right, move on to the next one. Is it? Um, yeah, I wonder if it's not updating. I'm oh. sorry about. Uh, uh, is it updating for other folks? Yeah. It, um, does it show the an overview slide now? With the it's on uh, what what is meshery engineering um, teams? Wow. Between Chris's Zoom having a problem. And my Zoom having a problem. This is kind of ridiculous. All right. There we are. All right. So, uh, yeah, to go into a little more uh, into the internals here, let's talk a little bit specifically about what Meshery does. Um, so, right at the center of this diagram, we have the Meshery platform. So that's calls out. That's uh, that's really the heart of the whole uh, the whole thing. Uh, so it's really at, at its core is extensible, uh, but the, the platform itself is providing, you know, model-based policy-driven orchestration. And so this last presentation is um, of the CEL, you know, and uh, sort of policy-driven, um, how, how, how policies are going to be uh, playing a role in infrastructure development moving forward. That's really at the heart of how Meshery um, works. Uh, and then an evaluation engine for, um, all the infrastructure changes that Meshery is managing. So then as we go out uh, into these sort of radial uh, boxes, we get into um, tooling and operations that come uh, from kind of the overlap of Meshery platform itself, but then all these extensions and um, adapters and ways that Meshery is, is very extensible. So um, that includes things like load generation, uh, performance characterization. So that's um, load testing your clusters and then not only that, but making sense of the results. Um, uh, if we go around clockwise, so uh, Meshery provides GitOps tooling um, to, to basically to enhance your, your own uh, deployment uh, workflows with things like uh, uh, GitHub actions based around performance testing, um, workspaces and snapshots that we can talk about uh, in more detail. Um, when we look at the extensible workflows, Meshery provides a whole, um, you know, a whole workflow for creating these uh, infrastructure components and then the approvals and the, uh, uh, the like identity management the teams might uh, put, to, put to use around like who is allowed to uh, push infrastructure components around, who's allowed to make changes to infrastructure components. So Meshery provides a, uh, a workflow for, for those kinds of, uh, uh, those kinds of processes. Uh, continuing around, we have identity and permissions. And so that's within the Meshery dashboard itself. There's a robust uh, and extensible uh, identity management system that allows people to uh, manage who can log into the dashboard, who can see what, who can perform what operations on the infrastructure itself. And so Meshery provides not only a way to kind of manage your infrastructure actively, but also view it. So, so for some people, it might be enough to have a view of the infrastructure. Others might have um, all the way down to a sort of administrator roles and making changes to the infrastructure itself. Uh, one of the really interesting and exciting parts of Meshery is the collaborative canvas. Uh, and so this is a, a browser-based experience where uh, users can collaborate and look at infrastructure in various different ways, um, most notably in sort of a designer mode where you can be putting together infrastructure, um, having conversations around infrastructure, but in a sort of a designer in a designer mode where you're not necessarily deploying to any actual infrastructure. 
Uh, but then moving on to an operator mode where you, where you might be actually uh, managing infrastructure itself. So pointing to an actual Kubernetes cluster or multiple Kubernetes clusters, now you've got a view of what's actually up there on your cluster. And, and, and there you can sort of combine these two where you're designing changes, kind of collaborating on them, having people be able to comment and learn and all go on the same page and then deploy it to the actual clusters themselves. Uh, and then lastly, this kind of goes along with the, um, the canvas itself, but uh, a collection of design patterns, uh, like a catalog of design patterns. So um, these can be reference architectures for best practices. They could also be works in progress for teams, maybe on domain specific uh, instances where teams are trying to find a solution uh, for their own infrastructure needs, but also as a way for anyone really to look through and find, okay, so I've got this one particular um, maybe piece of infrastructure I'm trying to either add to my cluster or maybe I'm trying to start something from scratch, like get through that initial, uh, you know, that learning curve, which can sometimes be somewhat daunting hmm. when it comes to uh, deploying like complex infrastructure. And so Meshery provides this catalog of, uh, of, of basically pre-made recipes that you can load into the uh, collaborative canvas. You can see how everything relates to each other. Um, uh, which allows, yeah, again, teams to learn and collaborate on changes moving forward. Try to jump onto the next slide. Hey, yeah, that worked. Great. So this is this this is there's a lot going on here, but this is uh, attempted to be kind of a cross section of meshery. So if we slice it in half and say what's going on inside of here, um, that's what we can see here. So. Uh, Without, without trying to dive in and kind of understand the whole thing, I think to start with, um, I think something really interesting here is to look for these um, lighter yellow uh, rectangles. And so those are the Meshery extension points. Um, so as I said before, Meshery at its core is extensible. And so as you can see, basically everywhere throughout this diagram, you see various extension points. And so if we start in the center here, we have the Meshery server. So we talked a little bit about that as the sort of the heart of the whole uh, platform. And so it's providing kind of a core UI uh, for the Meshery dashboard. It's providing uh, model schemas, so data schemas, uh, some of the core server behavior. So that's both defining uh, like API, uh, uh, API interfaces, so both REST API and GraphQL also database schemas and some of the core like load testing and performance testing functionality. Uh, but each one of those uh, components has extensibility. And so that, that's built in from the very beginning. So there's the, the sort of base functionality that they can be expanded upon. Uh, continuing on what the sort of server is responsible for, we have kind of base user preferences and user data and system preferences, again, um, all of which can be expanded. Um, I think Meshery, Meshery integrates obviously very well with Kubernetes. And so there is a kind of first class uh, integration there with single cluster, multi-cluster, uh, really Kubernetes of all shapes and sizes. Um, there's a Meshery operator that gets deployed within the cluster, uh, which uh, 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 will control uh, both like, again, in single, in single cluster or multi-cluster uh, modes. Um, and then a uh, the, the service mesh and the um, there's also a meshery sync component which all work together to uh, handle sort of like component discovery and uh, synchronizing across uh, all the different clusters that you might be deploying to. Um, as we go to the left, we have some examples of uh, dif uh, different. Uh, kind of things outside of uh, Meshery. So Meshery has uh, extensibility as a first class citizen. And so a lot of functionality, a lot of really interesting functionality is provided by, um, is provided by um, Meshery extensions. And so some of the most uh, kind of exciting parts of Meshery are actually not necessarily built into the core itself, but exist as extensions. Um, and so here we see like identity management, for instance, is easily uh, extensible. Uh, providers in terms of uh, like uh, ex uh, integration with cloud providers, so integration with AWS, GCP, uh, et cetera, that, that is all extensible. Um, and uh, and so again, like 
collaboration where we see, and we can talk further about the uh, meshery, like uh, meshery uh, mesh map, the meshery collaborative environment. That's also Excel, an extension of the uh, core meshery server. And go on to the next. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, here we go, it's perfect. So uh, this is diving into uh, one area in particular, which I think uh, helps kind of sum up the way that Meshery uses the core server along with extensions uh, to provide a, a, a sort of cohesive experience for users and a really like useful um, workflow. So if we look at this diagram, what we see is right at the middle, we have the Meshery server. And so in this case, what, the, what we're calling out of the Meshery server is this idea of Meshery designs. And so a Meshery design is any, any piece of infrastructure or collection of infrastructure that might get deployed to um, your, actual, uh, your actual clusters. Uh, so, so that can be, uh, that's basically, that can come back and start from anything from a Kubernetes manifest to a Helm chart. Um, and then Meshery adds metadata on top of that to enhance the experience and provide things like collaborative workflows. So in this case, we can see that in, uh, from various different starting points, we have these designs coming in, the file format is converted into a shape that Meshery understands, and then that's a run through a policy evaluation. So that's run through, um, currently Meshery uses uh, Rego policy to validate the, um, validate the design itself. And then in the end, it turns that into an actionable design format, which can then be uh, both worked on in the collaborative environment, but also ultimately deployed to real infrastructure. And then so if we go out to the outer layers here, I think what's interesting is that you can see all these different starting points. And so that core experience is the same, whether you start, for instance, from the top left here, you have uh, uh, you're importing a design through maybe the Meshery uh, UI, like the base Meshery dashboard. But then in the top right, you could potentially coming in from the mesh map, which is one of those extensions, which is the collaborative work environment. Uh, at the bottom left, if you want to take it kind of down to the uh, uh, down to the CLI, there's a Meshery CTL CLI tool. So you could also import designs from there. So it really is up to the users. And I know everyone has their own sort of like level of comfort, either on the command line uh, or using kind of like rich UI experiences like mesh map. So everyone can kind of choose their own adventure, but those injury points all coalesce into a single workflow within the Meshery server. All right, if we can tap on. So in terms of integration in a cloud native environment, I mean, Meshery does a great job of that. Currently, as you can see here, 320 integrations. Um, integration with CNCF, with other CNCF projects is just at the core of what Meshery does. Uh, Meshery provides uh, these like these projects and these tools as components within these collaborative environments. So if you want to uh, deploy a new service mesh, if you want to deploy one of the like many awesome projects within CNCF, Meshery allows that out of the box. So almost all of the CNCF projects are modeled within Meshery uh, and Meshery itself then makes it, makes it kind of enhances that understanding of, you know, what's required and, and how does maybe uh, the custom resource definitions from one project, like, what actually happens in my infrastructure when I deploy one of these? Like Meshery is uh, here to help users understand that as they're deploying new infrastructure. So here's a, another uh, kind of cross section of some of the interesting extensions that Meshery does provide. And this is call out to uh, the Meshery Docker extension in particular. Uh, this is another good example of how Meshery provides people or allows people to sort of choose their own adventure. And so there's a Meshery Docker desktop extension uh, that provides Kubernetes within Docker and then Meshery to manage the cloud. And so then if someone wants, if someone's most comfortable running uh, Docker desktop, then Meshery can integrate with that and allow them to have that experience uh, to, to manage their infrastructure and still have the, the great tooling that Meshery provides. Uh, we've brought it up a lot, but this, this tab calls out the, uh, the um, uh, the cloud native playground. So uh, this is another, this is a Kubernetes uh, instance that Meshery provisions that uh, users can get access to by going through the Meshery dashboard. They get a get a user account and they can request access to the, the cloud native playground. This has been really awesome for users who want to experiment and test with things. 
and, and not maybe get uh, hampered by that initial like, okay, how do I set up a Kubernetes cluster? Do I have to go to one of the cloud providers? Do I try to run it locally? Um, some of those questions that can really slow down experimentation uh, and, and adoption of new tooling. Um, Meshery provides a playground, which is itself just a Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, on top of that, Meshery is running, and then Meshery has Mesh Map, and that's what you're seeing in this call out on the right. Uh, it's this interactive, collaborative environment where you can drag around CNCF components, uh, base Kubernetes components. You can drag around relationships between them, and Meshery itself and Mesh Map in particular are validating those relationships. They're helping users realize, okay, this might relate to this, but maybe not quite like that, or this can relate to this, but it requires this piece of metadata to be properly mapped. Meshery is doing all the work to validate those relationships and make it that much easier for users to see all in one place uh, you know, whether things are set up properly. So moving on, maintainers and contributors. Uh, this is one of the, you know, really, I think the strong, strong places for Meshery. Um, you can see on the left some of the sort of corporate uh, maintainers and some of the teams that have made use of Meshery. So there's a lot of really familiar names there. Um, and then in terms of Meshery contributors, over 1,900 uh, coming from coming from DevStats and 350% uh, uh, growth in commits since last year. So there's been a lot of growth. Um, the community is really active and it's a really, um, as someone who's joined fairly recently, it's been a really uh, welcoming community. Uh, here's some more data that I think is fairly self-explanatory coming from the CNCF uh, velocity data. You can see you know, since 2020, the, the position in terms of velocity has grown um, now right, right around the top 10. Um, and same on the author side, it's just grown uh, year over year and continues to grow at even an increased velocity. Uh, for me, you know, one of the most really compelling parts of Meshery is the, uh, is the support that is provided to newcomers. So we can see on the left here in terms of uh, the Linux Foundation uh, um, mentorship program, Meshery is the number one most popular project by a, a fairly significant margin. Uh, and I think that really comes from a really thoughtful program that's been in place to welcome newcomers. So uh, you can see on the right here, there's something called the MeshMate program where newcomers are matched with more experienced members of the community to help support them and help them understand how to maybe pick up their first, uh, first task and how to get things running. Um, and again, as somebody who is Someone new to the community, I've, I've just found it like uh, incredibly impressive how supportive it feels and how uh, not only is so like work is available and, and you're supported in picking up a task, but then really recognized as you make contributions. It's a yeah, it's a really the community feels really supportive. Uh, here's some more data about uh, adoption. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, performance and load testing is a key component of Meshery, and 140,000 more. Uh, performance tests have been run using Meshery. Uh, again, some of these names should be very familiar to folks. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the uh, the social numbers that I think speak for themselves. The, the Slack community is very active. It's really easy to get uh, someone to help out. It's really easy to get interaction with people in the community. Uh, the GitHub stars growing like a you know in, in a great way in a in a great uh, direction there. And then at the top right there, you can see it. A, a, a small image, but uh, just an idea of how some of the larger kind of corporate partners are uh, think about Meshery. So you, there you have Meshery really at the middle of a greater effort to add all kinds of things to Hewlett Packard's uh, own like internal uh, platform. So now getting to the project timeline, going back to 2019, all the way through today, uh, many releases, you can see some of the milestones on the top from some of the, you know, starting with some of the uh, performance testing and some of the kind of uh, observability. But then I think as the project matured and as new ideas came, you see uh, all these continued expansions of it. Um, so the Meshery Docker extension in 2022 and then the Meshery Playground just last year, like these are really uh, exciting tools and really uh, feature rich and powerful tools that have been added along the way. Um, brings us to today where, about version 0.8 and then looking into the future, um, you know, hopefully moving on into further uh, NCF integration, but even so adding more features moving forward. Uh, so this is looking a bit at the roadmap and uh, looking to the future. 
So this is uh, some of the priorities looking out over the next year and years, you know, uh, stabilizing the API surface. Of course, that's been, been a moving target over time, but as again, as the project has matured, um, getting that stabilized is a key priority. Uh, the workflow engine and the, the core server components and some of the functionality that provides to be validating and uh, making sure that infrastructure is being deployed and uh, sort of where we can validate that, how we can catch it, how we can make it as easy as possible for people to be kind of understanding what's going to happen and catching errors as soon as possible. All of that is uh, currently being enhanced within Meshery. Uh, of course, uh, upgrades and uh, washing bugs and making sure that everything works as well as possible and uh, things like deployments and all that goes as smoothly as possible. Uh, expanding the policy engine. So as I mentioned before, the OPA policies uh, and how we validate Kubernetes manifest and all of the other things that get deployed to the final infrastructure. And then moving that, starting to talk about moving that into the browser and into Wasm-based evaluation. Uh, of course, there's interest in adding AI uh, analysis, both to sort of like uh, deployment, uh, deployment components themselves, but then as the relationships get more and more complicated, how can AI help uh, catch problems, uh, propose solutions for problems, and you just continue to get more insight. Uh, expanding integration platform-wise, Azure is, is top of the list right now. And then security hardening, of course, is, is top priority. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, that brings us to the uh, end of our presentation. So thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And of course, open to any questions and further discussion. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, any any questions from the audience? Uh, I I had one question, maybe to yeah. start us off. Um, do you you showed some cloud specific parts how you support certain clouds? Uh, what is that part? What makes it cloud specific that needs um, specific support there? So uh, in terms of uh, Meshery can can be running on uh, managed environments. So if you're running Meshery and you're deploying to uh, AWS, uh, EKS, or Google Cloud, or any of these managed providers, then Meshery can provide these extensions that make that, uh, that, that flow as simple as possible. Uh, so here, you know, he's bringing up these components, which are actual AWS specific components. And so that's what those integrations are, are about. It's about uh, deploying the tooling and the uh, uh, kind of expecting the cluster to be running in these managed environments. Yeah, adding to, th adding to that, um, well, actually here in about 12 minutes, there's the ACK community meeting, the AWS controllers for Kubernetes community meeting. And there are about 30-ish um, Kubernetes operators that AWS um, publishes and maintains. And so to the extent that uh, Meshery models, Meshery internally models and characterizes the infrastructure under management, um, right now it's, or to date, it has largely been focused on characterizing that infrastructure um, in context of Kubernetes land or in context of like custom resources. And to the extent that these cloud providers have published essentially inter interfaces to non-Kubernetes services like cloud trails, just a, as a random example, uh, that they've, they've offered a gateway for uh, Meshery to, to offer up the same value and the same management of non-Kubernetes services or cloud specific services um, in this way. Okay. So, uh, yeah. if, if the provider uh, is not supported officially, can you still deploy to a different met provider managed service and, and get some benefit out of Meshery? Yeah, great question. And and um, now that I've opened up my mouth, I'm going to have a hard time. Chris is going to have a hard time shutting me up, I think. it. it uh, yeah, there's probably a couple of, yes concisely. And then there's probably a couple of different ways to expound on that. One is to say that Meshery, Meshery provides value. Um, as a matter of fact, 
let me open up the docs because I think it says it somewhat prominently as we look at like, like the overview of measury. Measury is Kubernetes centric, but Kubernetes is not required, uh, which is to say that you can measure deploys as uh, either a single container or a set of containers. Um, I'll explain what that set is in, in a moment. Um, so, so it's Docker required, I suppose, is what how you you know say it. Uh, if you don't have Kubernetes around, uh, a large portion of the value that you'll find out of Meshery has to do with um, performance management or the the internal load generators that it has built in and the its ability to perform statistical analysis over um, load that it can generate and send to any endpoint. Um, HTTP, uh, I believe gRPC is supported now. Um, one of the maintainers from Intel, Shin, is on. He might keep me honest. Um, but uh, that capability within Meshery is available to people in your environment, whether you have Kubernetes around or not. If you have Kubernetes present, whether it's a managed Kubernetes service or locally deployed, you can still choose to deploy Meshery external to Kubernetes to, to your cluster, or optionally um, or alternatively deploy Meshery inside of your cluster. Um, when Meshery connects to a Kubernetes cluster, whether it is deployed inside of a cluster or you connect it to one or more, uh, you connect it to one or more self-managed or hosted clusters. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Meshery will automatically deploy the Meshery operator, which Chris was uh, characterizing earlier as uh, deploying. Well, uh, another component that we refer to as Mesh Sync that. Um, helps the core Meshery server keep keep up to speed with what's going on in each of the clusters and um, be able to reason over, well, allow the users of Meshery to reason over, to do multi-cluster management in that sense. I think that's what you're looking for, Stephen. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Other questions? So, uh, one question that you already have a sponsor in the TOC who's uh, driving the due diligence for incubation? No, no. Um, I we I, we didn't we haven't asked and Ricardo. That's because my understanding is that you're not supposed. I don't know. You, you know, like I, I don't know, but no, we haven't. We haven't asked. Like we applied for incubation last March, and you know, nine months ago, a year ago, whatever. Like. And so we're finally being asked to present. And so okay. you, can, you can tell that I'm not frustrated by that in any way. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think we can uh, post the presentation on the GitHub issue. Um, yeah, and maybe provide like a like a brief assessment on, on incubation. Yeah, and and see if one of the TOC members takes it up. Um, obviously they'll have to go through like, you know, the standard due diligence process, you know, uh, interviewing end users and looking at all the different stats of the project. Perfect. Um, other, other questions or things that we can, that folks want to poke at or, uh, you know, I think the scope of the project is pretty wide, right? So it might be, yeah, because like it does a lot of different things, right? So, oh, wow. um, I think some folks might be familiar with some areas, but they may not be quite familiar with some others. But it, it's pretty extensive. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call out. Uh, there's backup slides that take people through the, uh, like we should probably cut all of this stuff out uh, as we go to. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, it's fine to leave in. But but yeah, to your point, um, yeah, there's it's um yep, it's not that the project is unscoped. As a matter of fact, some of its original scope it continues to be 
I, maybe I maybe I should even say some. I should probably say all. We can we can go back and compare. Um, just as a random example, originally, um, as it got its start, focused in performance characterization or performance uh, management, that it was a a stated non goal that Meshery proper Meshery server would be would persist. Uh, those, those test results or would persist the, uh, yeah, yeah, would persist your test results in this case. That Meshery server is, it does have a database. It does do lots of stuff, but it's considered, um, its storage or its memory, so to speak, is considered transient in nature. It's not considered, um, I mean, it's not something that the project officially attempts to support. It's like a long lived persistent volumes that that store the, the data there. Um, do, People that deploy it certainly have connected persistent volumes and certainly do. Part of the data that Meshery collects is um, transient to the extent that it's um, a bunch of information synchronized from various clusters that are under management. And that information, those resources, those clusters are active, things change a lot. And so there's definitely a time value to some of the data that Meshery has. Some of the other data that it has, there's you, know, you absolutely do want to persist. So if you're using um, Meshery designs, uh, and you've, you know, if, if you, a design is like under the covers, um, somewhat similar to infrastructure as code. So you might start a meshery design. You might um, articulate how it is that you want for meshery to, to, you know, um, well, to tell Kubernetes in this case, if Kubernetes is your target platform, to realize a particular um, infrastructure deployment, maybe to deploy Prometheus and have it configured with certain um, triggers or certain alert rules, uh, that information, that design, you're most likely going to want to hold on to and persist. And there are meshery extensions. You can do it yourself as a user, or there are other extensions like the remote providers that um, Chris was referring to that will allow you to create a user account and persist those designs and version them over time. And, and um, anyway. Uh, Ricardo, I guess, I guess we got started on um, things that were in scope and out of scope, sort of from the start of the project, and and persistent storage is just uh, continues to be out of scope for the project, just as a, a random example. There's a, there's a number of like ecosystem kind of value that that occur uh, as Meshery attempts to model the broad variety of those like 320 ish integrations. Um, that there have been a number of other projects that have been interested in collaborating and, and have collaborated on um, things like defining things like a taxonomy and, and ontology for um, Kubernetes based Kubernetes centric infrastructure. How it is that um, you know there there are schemas published by Kubernetes. It's APIs that that you have standard resources, standard Kubernetes resources. You also have custom um, Kubernetes resources that. All kinds of projects you know create, but how those interrelate? Well, I'm ignorant of a published definition of that or a standard a standardized, and so this effort um, has been and is of value to um, just that effort alone onto its own is of value to others, and so. Um, it's one of the it's one of the ongoing areas of um, um, development. Um, the more articulate and well refined these relationships are, just like Chris was articulating as they're um, evaluated by Rego in this case, um, the more the more of them that they are, the more specific they are. The more that Meshery tends to delight users, the more that um, as you go to design your infrastructure, you um, Meshery is more keenly and granularly cognizant of each of the components and how they should or should not be allowed to relate to one another, how they affect one another, how a change of one affects the other. And so the at some point um, in the future, hopefully, the um, configuration of your infrastructure becomes not only much more much more simplified, um, but hopefully, to the extent that you're using a, a visual interface to design your infrastructure, hopefully that becomes um, a lot more intuitive. 
Makes sense, yeah. I think we're out of time already, but yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time for today. Thank you, Lee and Chris. Um, the I, I linked the incubation application in the chat for folks to look at. I think you um, there's it's likely a uh, change in the process for uh, the template for applications. So I think um, you know I know you had the older one that was kind of superseded by this one. So that that makes sense. Um, there will likely be additional questions. I have additional questions that we're out of time for today that, that we can post to that issue. And uh, if it doesn't make sense to come back as a follow-up, we can always do that as well uh, if, if, if we need to um, for, for more live discussion. Um, but really appreciate your time today as well as um, uh, Kevin's uh, time for Cell Playground. Any, any last comments from you guys? Oh, thanks a bunch, guys. By the way, the frustration that I was articulating earlier, it's not, it was, aimed not not directed toward this area just to sort of a general uh yeah. anyway th thanks a bunch for making time you guys got it scheduled fast and and you got great questions coming and uh, yeah. yeah thanks everyone yeah no problem thank you so much yeah, thanks very much for your time come back to tag runtime first and third thursdays of the month um hope to see you again soon uh, otherwise we'll reach out on the issue and i'm sure we'll be talking again soon thank you very much all right, All right.